me when you arrived to Tucson. Uh, I arrived here in Tucson in 1964. How did you, like, what part of Tucson did you live in? You know, like, where did your family, like, did you come with your parents? Like, Well, my mom had just passed away uh, that year in 64, and I was the last of her siblings, uh, and I, after her death, I, I, I came to Tucson in 1964, I arrived here in uh, Tucson, and I lived in South Tucson, city proper. It's a little town within the city. And um, I lived there for quite a number of years. I worked downtown. I worked at Grave Electric Company, which is no longer there. And uh, then the rest is um, a lot of uh, medical environment uh, work that I did. And so um, when did you first learn about the, the contamination in Southside Tucson? Well, uh, it was in the newspapers so often and, and on TV. And so, uh, you know, you started uh, listening and reading about it, but not really paying too much attention. It was a kind of a different topic that was being, you know, talked about. But uh, then you're... you're um, you start to realize that it's your city and you want to know more about it. And so the years in the 80s, I guess the late 80s, is when I really got involved in, in paying attention and, and, and getting involved in meetings and listening to what was going on. And uh, it was very problematic for the people of Tucson, the contamination was. And uh, then uh, I was working at a social service agency at the time, and uh, I attended a lot of the meetings uh, at El Pueblo Neighborhood Center regarding this issue of the water contamination. EPA was in town at that time, and a lot of the uh, responsible parties were joining in meetings there at El Pueblo. And so my husband, uh, Abe, and I started attending uh, those particular meetings, which were very interesting at the time and quite educational. We would just sit there and listen to what was going on. There were a lot of technical uh, conversations which we didn't really understand, a lot of acronyms that we had never heard, but we learned later what they stood for. And... Uh, it was, a, like I said, a, a time of, of uh, time to get a, a time for involvement when we did. And we became part of the TCE sub, subcommittee, and that was spearheaded by Lorraine Lee at that time. And uh, she brought in people from the local government, city and county, and uh, then state at, at some point in time and uh, community. Uh, community was very important, and the, the meetings were well attended by a lot of community that were uh, trying to uh, express the way they felt and express they did. There was uh, a lot of uh, contention at the table, you might say, and, and uh, we, we, because we were getting to know each other, the government and the community, we wanted them to hear about our problems, and we wanted them to understand what it is that we wanted them to do for this community, which was, uh, at that time, you know, find out why the illnesses were happening, um, find out why, what was the reason the water was polluted to that extent. As you know, the parts per billion are 0.5 parts per billion, and they were way up in the 1,200 and more in some instances in, in some areas on the south side of parts per billion of TCE. And uh, people claim that their health was impacted, and, and rightfully so. And there was a lot of uh, anger and uh, 
questions and things like that. So that's that was the beginning of the involvement on our part. Okay. And did you see any illnesses in your neighborhood or anything of that sort? N no, not no, not really. We heard that there were illnesses, not only in a certain uh, street here in Tucson, uh, and I don't remember if it was Elvira. I'm not sure, but uh, because at that time. Uh, uh, a committee of people uh, known as the Tucsonas for a clean, clean Environment had gotten involved, and they were the persons that brought up, brought to light the problems of health and all that. And then um, we understood at the time that there were um, issues at Sunnyside High with the children's health. And there was a particular teacher, and I don't recall her name at this time, that did a study and found that the incidences of, Ill, of health were very high. And uh, other things that, that came about, like the article with Jane Kay, and boy, that was really explosive, and it was very truthful, and it was to the point of um, an investigation at that time. So, like I say again, very educational for, for us to be there at that time. And can you describe your efforts related to the TIA site or the Community Advisory Board or the TC subcommittees that you were involved? Mm -hmm. Well, beginning from the, excuse me, from the TC subcommittee, um, they, uh, the, the subcommittee uh, brought a lot of information, and uh, that was our way of learning through them what, what the issues were. And not only did they talk about it, but they acted on some of those uh, problems by uh, encouraging the responsible parties to talk about it along with the community. And then the state uh, ADEQ, Arizona Department of Environmental Quality, uh, came in. And, and then they suggested that perhaps uh, other agencies having to do with environment show up. And uh, I'm trying to remember so many, so many uh, components of, of the subcommittee that were brought in by them. And uh, it, it's hard to recall, but I'm, I'm going to do my best to really give you the, really give you an, uh, the history of what I know. Just that I need a little time to remember. Oh, um, the um, ATSDR was also involved, and uh, they brought in a person to come in and do a study, which was always inc inconclusive, and never really. Um, stress the fact that TC, TCE and health problems were connected. Uh, there was no conclusive, conclusion, conclusion on that point. And uh, it was very frustrating to the community that, that we didn't have answers. So then um, later on, um, the TC subcommittee uh, was stepped aside and the uh, Unified Community Advisory Board came in, the UCAB. And, and uh, we, Abe, myself and my husband Abe, uh, participated 100% on that. We never missed a meeting. And, uh, and uh, the reason that you can't miss meetings like that is because you lose information. There's so much technical talk uh, or speak, as they say, and so many things that you have to absorb and they'd give us packets to bring home to, to read, show us the map of the plume, where how extensive uh, and expansive it was. And, and, and our interest was sincere. We wanted to really learn how we could help by participating in the UCAB. And um, even today, I, I still attend meetings uh, occasionally. And so it's important for our community to be aware and, and to learn what's going on in, 
in your own backyard, so to speak. And so did the uh, UCAD then meet regularly, how often, and then who were the people that were taking or participating in the actual meeting? In the beginning, it was every month. They would fly in from all over the country, uh, Air Force, um, and local too, um, you know, like Hughes Aircraft at that time, before it became Raytheon, they were part of that. Um, the uh, Air National Guard was another component, another responsible party. Um, Tucson International Airport people and all that uh, would, would attend those meetings along with community. Was there a large amount of community as compared to all the agencies, or what were the numbers, like the comparison? It was, uh, it was well attended. It was uh, well balanced between the responsible parties. And in some instances, there was more community than, than there was, uh, you know, the responsible parties. And uh, it gave us a, a, a lot of... Um, push from the people to continue uh, questioning the PRPs as they are known. And what time period do you think was most active by community members when it came to the TIA site? I believe it started back in the in 1992, 91, 92, and um, it was in full force at that time. And about that time, uh, we were able to work together. We put our thoughts on the table. We put them on the table. They did the same, and and we came together because they they already knew that the people were not going to relent. They were going to continue questioning the problems and asking how they expected to clean up the areas the wells, and so on. And did you participate in any of the health studies or anything that occurred in the area? No, uh, but at that time, I had been hired by, by the clinic director that was there, and uh, he asked me to, uh, he asked me if I would work in helping him um, formulate some type of a, of a program to add to the existing clinic. And the program itself would, all, would be um, for, to find out the causal effect between TCE and health issues that people were uh, saying had harmed their health. So he, uh, he gave me a, a book to study, uh, not a book, but a some material to study, and out of that, I drew a program uh, called the TCE program, which was added to the clinic that existed there for quite a number of years. Now, in that component that I that I helped to to run, I I, I was titled program manager, and. Uh, we, uh, we did have outreach people that were going into the community to question folks uh, about their health and how their interest in coming into the clinic to be um, uh, seen by doctors um, if they felt that their heart health had been harmed. And we had certain criteria within the program. Um, not just anyone came in because, they, because this was free health care. But we had certain uh, guidelines, uh, such as if you lived or worked or attended schools within this area, the area of contamination, and you had to prove it by paperwork, your, your title of your home, your school, report cards, your current address, and things of that nature. And only then they would, uh, they would fit into the, to the program. Once they were in there, uh, we, uh, well, we would um, in, do the intake, a little history on the patient, and then uh, send them to be examined by 
a doctor that was uh, knowledgeable in environmental health. So that's that's uh, how I really got involved then. Mm -hmm. I love my work too, by the way. <laughs> and then thinking back on your experience on the Superfund site, what would you recommend or like to see future generations learn from this experience? They, uh, they need to stay vigilant. Uh, the, the contamination will not be cleaned in 10 years. It's going to take many, many years, way before I'm gone. The new generations are going to have to pay attention to the environment, well, water issues, etc. And what, what is happening here uh, between what you're doing is very important because it's going to leave um, a legend of what we went through at the time, at the point in time. And so they need to carry on that interest in keeping the environment clean, the waters clean, and safe uh, for our health's sake. And then how would you like the memory of your experience to be remembered? Mm, uh, citizen, citizens, uh, not only myself, but uh, you know, there was a group of citizens that were interested, wholeheartedly interested in, in, in what was happening in our community. Uh, we all love Tucson, and we wanted it to stay healthy and clean, uh, not only for this area, but for Tucson in general. And so it's, it comes from your self-interest in wanting to help a community. Uh, and, and I can't say that it was a self-interest for yourself. It's just that you're there on behalf of the community so that they can benefit, uh, you know, in the end. And what did you learn about uh, what was being done to clean up all the plume area where the contamination was in the groundwater and soil? Uh, that was really, that was really interesting to attend. Um, we were invited um, to many different places to take part in in uh, not only reading about it or talking about it, but actually seeing how how the cleansing of the water here at um, what they call the six pack at uh, it was uh, a six pack was uh, some tanks that were placed there at um, at Tucson International, and those were the first first um, mater uh, materials that were used to start cleaning the water. It was a process that that was being kind of um, explored with. And so community folks, not everybody, but some of us that really wanted to learn went in and, and saw how the operation worked. And um, they were courteous to us. In the end, you know, the responsible parties and the community really, really came together. And that's what I'm most proud of in 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 having people remember that you can work with government and you can uh, win on your side for the community uh, it it wasn't a, that we lost anything at the table but we gained everything once we were away from the table getting to know them they getting to know us we used to have a lot of good communication and uh, I have a lot of good things to say about the PRPs because they, w they were interested in helping the community. So it was, uh, it was educational at that point, too. And then can you tell us a little bit more about your experience with the health studies mm -hmm. and what was done at that time to look at the health and of the, basically the impacts that occurred because of the contamination? Mm -hmm. Well, this, uh, the, this, this, there were many studies. First of all, there were the epidemiolo epidemiological studies that uh, the University of Arizona was taking part in. I think Dr. Goldberg was, was helping with some of those studies, especially with the children that had a lot of congenital problems. And, and then um, through the schools. Uh, the schools were very, very involved. Uh, Sunnyside, I know, was because it was in the direct area, 
area of the of the plume and they were worried about the students that had been drinking water the funny thing is that at that time teachers were drinking bottled water and the kids were drinking right from the fountains there was that disparity the kids didn't know any different you know and and they were actually drinking water containing TCE so then um, the problems started showing in some of the studies and then uh, what else can I say about other things uh, the scientific Part of it was very interesting too. Uh, right before I left the clinic, uh, we were at the point of adding a second uh, part to the program that I had started, and the the, um, the scientific part was coming in to really get down and study the um, results that we were finding through the diagnoses that the doctors at the clinic were giving, and so. They were going to study the clusters, the patterns, the illnesses, uh, the age groups, uh, ethnic-wise, um, age-wise, and, and never came to pass uh, at that time that the, the program ended because of money. Not that it wasn't available, but uh, there was some, I guess, political problems that kept us from continuing that part of the program. And then how would you describe the site and the history of cleanup to somebody moving in the neighborhood? If there were, if you saw a new neighbor that was moving in, how would you talk to them about the contamination? Mm -hmm. Well, I, um, I had a, uh, a, a group of girls uh, that were called, I called the, um, the uh, pr that little program, uh, it's a side program from the clinic, uh, Entre Nosotros, Among Us. And those girls would go into the community to visit and to find out what the problems, health problems were uh, with the neighbors, in the neighborhoods and stuff like that. And that would encourage more people to come in and, and get tested, or not tested, but get um, health care at the clinic and possibly refer to a specialty type of clinic. And uh, so that was by way of, that was our way of um, involving the clinic into the community. I, I believe that's the question you had. Mm -hmm. And then can you tell me a little bit about the Tucson Access program that you had? Mm -hmm. uh, there was a, the public channel that people mm -hmm. that you would bring people and interview them. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I don't know how I started that, but somebody somebody asked me, would you be willing to to do a presentation and intro and uh, interview um, different people on the program um, that are in charge, like the county, the city. Um, the state and even the PRPs to come in and, and you interview them and question them and and I've always just put my mug out there for the public for the good of whatever I'm doing at the time and yeah I, I yes I had a a, pro, a 30 minute program on channel 12 at that time Access Tucson and and uh, I, I would bring in or invite uh, some personalities such as um, uh, Steve Leal, um, a lot of the UCAB members like Anne Montano, Abe Campillo, my husband, uh, Mr. Uh, Henry Vega. Uh, I have them all on 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 tape, and uh, we would talk about the TC program and try to educate the public about what we were about and what was what they could do about it and in general give the the, the information to the people in Tucson and then what other educational besides what you've already talked about the Tucson access the other the El Pueblo mm -hmm. neighborhood clinic uh, what other projects or programs were you involved in that were around 
Well, we were connected to Nogales at the time, was having a lot of environmental problems, water issues. Um, and so when they heard about the work we were doing here, they came to us and, um, and sat with us at meetings and, and observed what we were doing. And in turn, they would invite us to visit their site in Nogales. And uh, uh, we worked together. Another was uh, many meetings uh, with regard to um, such as doctors that were coming in from out of state, Dr. Kay Kilburn, uh, who was a, um, a professor there at the University of Southern California, and he was uh, with the, uh, again, the psychological, psychiatric, and neurobehavioral sciences area components. And he gave a lot of talks and uh, information for us. And uh, we learned from him. He was a wonderful, uh, wonderful. I have pictures of him somewhere uh, and, and um, that we might show later. And so it was, uh, we attended many meetings, uh, you name it. Uh, we brought students in from from the, again the University of Southern California to um, observe what was going on at the three hangar area. Oh, there's nothing to see, but uh, there's there's a very big problem in that particular area where you actually have the sludge TCE, what they call the con contaminant, and that is just stuck to the walls of the uh, of the land of the bottom, the aquifer, and those are hard to clean, and they came to see the, the area, and, and uh, we brought them back to the clinic. They were interested again, California again has many issues there uh, in, in some areas with, TC, with TCE actually. They have a lot of plants, airplane, airplane plants in California. And, the same thing that happened here was happening, and, and they were interested in learning. So what advice do you have for the state and federal governments that oversee the cleanup, uh, since you know what the community feels regarding the history of the site? Do you have any advice for them? Well, for what it's worth, I, I, just, uh, I just want the, the, the people that surround our South Side uh, sector to stay uh, very aware of the harm that could possibly come to the to a community should they fail to follow what has already been established to clean the environment. Um, in other words, all the work that has been done will be for naught if the same thing would happen again. So I hope this is a lesson, really, a lesson for the people that surround our community with industrial um, work, that you know they are part of the community too, and they need to take care of it. I was invited to uh, speak at, in uh, St. Louis before a mass of um, uh, gentlemen that are in the service that are connected to the Air Force and other uh, service areas. And they wanted me to speak a little bit about what was happening here in Tucson, which I did. I was one of six people that were invited, uh, other people from different parts of the country. And I gave a nice little speech that um, uh, you know, they, when they land here, when they establish here, they are part of us. They are part of our community. They're not just building and going away to the foothills, if you will, or to other parts of the country. They don't because they don't reside in our area. But what they leave behind, we need to absorb, and we don't have to if they were if they're going to be careful. They need to be careful and understand that this is their community as well, and there are repercussions to to deal with 
uh, should they not follow. And that's why it's important for the children in the future to understand the problems that we went through and keep uh, very, very aware so that this doesn't occur ever again. It, it's been a very serious health issue. Uh -huh. Are you aware of any efforts that have been done to educate children in the area about this site? Mm -hmm. Well, we, uh, we understand that there's a book that's going to be part of the curriculum in Sunnyside, but I'm not sure where that is uh, at this time. And did the Superfund site, in your experience, did it change your thinking about the sources of chemical exposures or how you view chemicals now in your home or in your daily life? No, we should. No, we should. We should be more aware of, of the harm that you know some of the what it contains. But who's careful enough to read everything uh, when you're cleaning your home or? But it comes to the back of your mind, you know, uh, when you start spraying bug spray and you start coughing up and you wonder, you know, is that going to kill me? Or And you're more careful, yeah, the next time. I guess uh, it did put something in somebody's mind about it, yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to comment on the site or anything uh, that you want to tell people that look at your interview? Well, I, I just want to say that I was very fortunate to take part in in this issue. Uh, it's been quite a few years back now. And um, there are more people like I am that are interested um, should something else happen, you know, and I hope that they step up and comment. It makes a difference when you talk and when you can... Uh, negotiate when you can dialogue with the people that are causing the problem. It, it, it can be done. And uh, I still have friends from uh, different agencies that were part of the roundtable discussion. And uh, they understand fully now what we were going through. And um, so I just feel like I went, my husband and I, went through a very educational experience with uh, this issue of TCE. It was a sad issue in some points because it impacted people not only phys physiologically, but uh, it also in the um, psychological component of a person's uh, makeup. They were affected, and our clinic was helpful in uh, being a sound sounding board to people that had never spoken about how they felt. And so they came to us and they expressed how they felt and they were able to get health care uh, at no cost, pharmacy at no cost, and all that. I negotiated with uh, people in town. Uh, for example, Walgreens um, was working with us in um, by a letter that I would sign off and they would present it, and they would get their medication at no cost. Later on, Keno Hospital took over that uh, issue, that um, part of my uh, referral. And, and again, we were able to get specialty clinics. And we could only go so far in pricing because um, specialty clinics are, are quite expensive, but, you know, they would help people. And... Uh, and so I want, uh, I, I'm very proud of the work that we did at El Pueblo Clinic. And uh, it's a small clinic with a big heart. Okay, and you can start whenever you want. And then we just want to hear a general overview of what the photograph is. Mm -hmm. And then mention, like, who are some of the people in there, too. Okay. Well, well first of all, uh, this is the the area of the plume uh, of the the where the plume uh, was and it shows a few of the PRPs on the side I don't know if they're visible and, and this is a, a doctor from the University of Southern California Dr. K. Kilburn and he used to be so very interested in 
science, the scientific component of it. We never got to that point, but he was a wonderful person that loved what we were doing, and he was assisting us in every way he could. Uh, this is Dr. Cecilia Rosales, and Dr. Cecilia Rosales is from the University of, was from the University of Arizona in the Rural Health Department. She was very supportive of our program. This is a. Uh, uh, I'm here in this. I'm here in this picture along with Henry Vega, uh, from the UCAB, you know. United Community Advisory Board. And there's also Steve Leal, who was the councilman for Ward 5 at that time. I have, um, I have Craig Cooper. He was from the EPA and uh, did a lot of good work for, for the community. And this is, um, this is just a group of uh, of people, guests, and speakers at El Pueblo Clinic meeting. And I'm standing there somewhere in the background. And this, this is Anne Montano. She's a UCAB member still, even today. And she was speaking on behalf of the TCE clinic, a very good supporter of the clinic. This one is um, my husband, Abe Campillo. Uh, giving a report on the UCAB activities. This one here is Dr. Herb Abrams, uh, Professor Emeritus from the College of Medicine at the University of Arizona. Um, Dr. Abrams has since passed away. So all these photographs that you showed me, they're kind of the big time when UCAB was around and mm -hmm. working on all this. So what does all this mean to you? It's a great piece of history. Uh, a lot of the people that were there that I showed on uh, on those photographs were very important and instrumental in um, in guiding us uh, with the issues of health uh, related to TCE. I don't think. Uh, it's it's been stopped. The study has never stopped, but it's never been proven. But it someday will. It, it you know someday somebody from the University of Arizona is going to really follow through and and conclude that there was a causal effect. Okay, so these are all the questions that I have for you. Is mm -hmm. there anything that you would like to add that maybe I missed or anything like that? Just, uh, I just want to say that uh, I want to thank my husband. He was always very supportive of me. He's not well today, and that's the reason that he, he didn't present. But he was uh, very active, and um, and he uh, was responsible for the TAG grant at one point in time. And the TAG grant is um, was brought in. A gentleman from San Francisco came in to review what was being done by the potential responsible parties to see if they were really telling the community the facts that were they, that they were presenting. Were they really factual? And yes, they were found to be. He, he did a, a the gentleman, and I can't recall his name either. Um, but Abe, um, my husband, brought in that tag grant, and um, and that was a big part of the study there as well at, you know, at the clinic. Mm -hmm. And just to mention, so your husband, how did he bring that tag grant to us? Can you mention that? Mm. Through what organization? Yes. Uh, at the time, they needed a 501c3 um, to bring that money through that uh, and place it at the 501c3 as a is a pass through into the clinic. And so uh, Tusanas for a Clean Environment were involved with that as well. And, and uh, Rose Agustin worked with Abe. And then uh, at that time, Abe was, uh, was uh, president of one of the LULAC chapters, chapter oh, 10, I believe, here in, in, on the south side. So um, that money 
then came in through uh, through um, LULAC and into the community, to the clinic, and that money was used for the study that that was made. So. Well, thank you, Cecilia.